Hello everyone, Reggie Time here again with some more 10 and L and 8 and L on Sky Poker, focusing on hopefully building a bankroll in the next couple of weeks to get us taking shots at the 20 and L game. Before we get too much into the video, can I just remind you guys to hit the like button and um very much appreciate that. Apparently it helps the videos do really quite well. Um we're just gonna like obviously jam here against T he he and if he's swapped us straight then go him. Happy days. Um He was a bit unpleasant to me the other night. <laughs> not sure why. Maybe he's just having a bad day, I'm not sure, but um Maybe it's just some guy who likes to abuse the chat. Maybe it's some guy who just likes the chat in general and not necessarily abuse it. Who knows? But couldn't give less of a fuck if somebody wants to be unpleasant. That's great. But I'd much rather they were. Um, I'd much rather people were pleasant because it just makes for an all round more pleasant experience, doesn't it? Hello, we have the kings again. Pretty sweet to get some more action. <laughs> Yeah, if you're going to hit the like button, apparently it's really good for algorithms or something. I'm going to fuck. I've no idea what any of it means. Why have we flopped top set again? We are running good. Just check for this time. Yeah, so please hit the like button. Um, it's As it's the start of the month, this will be going out on the 1st of December. It's not too late to join my Skype study group. We've had a real influx in the last few days. Mostly US players. Be nice to get a few more UK and European players in before the end of the month, before the the month gets too far in. Um, if you do want to inquire as to what you get for your money with my study group, please just leave a message below the chat or leave a message in Facebook or whatever it is that you find the video and I'll find it and I'll get back to you. And that's the end of the housekeeping. Let's just crack on with the plane now. Try and find another table for this for this area imminently. Um get called in two spots and then this really bad turn card rolls off, so unless someone bets really small, I'm just in check four mode at this point. Not sure where 70 pence stands in the betting small or betting large thing. It's kind of right in the middle, isn't it? With the half pot. I guess because we have the straight draw too. I mean, we could be drawing dead, that's the problem, but I guess we have to call. And um, we'll definitely just check for him this river, unless he bets like 70 pence again or something. Three bit in dodgy, but we're going to be three bit in dodgy for value. Table three, and then we're just squeezing general. Defend the queen and suit on the button against Jackal, who I believe we've covered in a previous session, who seems to be a relatively limited regular. We got our squeeze called in two spots and we got a reasonable flop for us to try and represent something and because it's multi-way we really don't need to bet too big here. Bet 112, get him to fold a bunch of pocket pairs. Jackal bets into two players after raising. Um, we don't have anything trivial fold and we get our C bet through on table three which is, which is nice. Jackal checks back the turn after betting the flop. Not really sure what he's doing that with. Against, um, against the fish. I guess he could maybe see bet two jacks or something and then just play it that way. Check the turn. So again, we're starting this session particularly late. I had another, another coaching session before the session tonight. Um, it didn't start till 10.30 UK time. So we are starting this session around around midnight I started it. 
So we are going to end up probably losing some tables. We may end up four tabling at some point, which is it's not ideal. But, um, it's where I am right now. I've been done some late shifts at work this week. Um, done some coaching sessions with the end of the month rush and. Yeah, I haven't got the volume I wanted to get in yet this week, but I'm now off work for the next four days. In fact, I'm off work for the next seven days, save for a four-hour shift. So I'm hoping to be able to get some reasonable volume in in the coming days. And I'm off for a live game Saturday. Looking forward to that. Off to, off to the casino. I'm not sure where yet. Could be Blackpool, could be Bolton, but... um. Up to the casino to play a document and some and some cash games. Hopefully not too much cash games, because if we're playing too much cash games, it usually means the document's gone a bit bonkers and a bit tits up. So if I don't play a single cash hand, I'll class that as a good result, because it'll mean I've done really quite well in the tournament. No reason to slow down on this board when we get called by two people. On table two, that was. We get raised by Barman. I mean, we lose to exactly aces and ace nine here, so if he's got one of those two hands, then good for him. I'm just going to check and just like check call, obviously, and hope he has some busted flushes or pocket eights or something. I mean, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. And we had the Q of four is. I knew he always had a value hand there. He didn't have a bluff very often, apart from these misdraws sometimes. But we played Bamman quite a lot, and he seems pretty, pretty solid, pretty honest. Um, and I guess he can have some bluffs there. But I was a little bit nervous. That's why we took the check call line because I wanted to keep all of his bluffs in. Um, I think it's kind of hard if I raise at any point. Eh, Going to be. Not that easy to get called by worse against that exact player. There's some players that'd be fist pump should be in there. Um against Barman. Yeah, of course I'm never folding. I didn't nit roll him or anything like that. But um, I really wanted to keep his range I wanted to keep all his bluffs in by not not raising and not betting the river. Because um I think he's solid enough to not call with worse too often there. I probably need to go back and look at the hand again because I can't remember exactly how pre-flop went down. I think maybe elbow min raised and then a few callers happened, I think, but might be wrong. Too talking about my excitement about playing live on Saturday because I do love playing live. Just like that, having the chips in your hand, having... Real cards, real people, real dealers. Um, yeah, I love it. I think I've often said it to people who have talked about poker. Um, if I was, if there was a, like a, a casino within like 10 miles of my front door or whatever, within reasonable driving, within like 20 minutes driving distance, I would be two things. And those things would be unemployed and divorced. Almost certainly. Because, um, I wouldn't be able to peel myself away. I'd just be, I've got that kind of addictive personality. I'd just like, I'd be in the casino every single night and hopefully um, I'd be making enough money that I didn't have to work. I wouldn't be unemployed because I'd be some DJ and boom, I'd be unemployed because hopefully I'd be making the live poker work for me. Another 8 and L table, we can pop in hopefully it doesn't look like the best one to be honest with you but we might pop it in anyway because I've yet to see a bad 8 in our table on Sky
you know, see him check him and raise that bar texture multi-way. We can tag him as a fish straight away because it's just something that a regular would never do unless it was a mis misclick. Mobile and Pima VA6. Um, completely non standard on most sites, in my opinion. Pretty standard in these exact games. It's not something you're going to be dead likely to do when we move up, but at the minute we're playing games where that's probably a fine strategy, so I'll adopt it. I mean, I'm absolutely fine playing totally exploitable strategy in games that there's very little chance we're going to get exploited. And I think that's pretty much accepted practice by most decent poker players these days. That, you know, if you're in a game where you can get away with doing really, really exploitable things, then you should absolutely be doing really, really exploitable things. And there'll still be some people out there who watch and think, fucking hell, that's terrible, that's really bad or whatever, because they've just, like, they're impossible. They, they don't know how to adjust, they don't know how to think for themselves. They just they just copy whatever they see on the forums or whatever they see in the latest, latest video that they're watching, and they're completely incapable of independent thought. But... Um, yeah, in games where you can get away with over limping, with hands that, you know, do really well in small pots, then you should absolutely be making it part of your strategy to get away with over limping. It makes no sense to do anything else, really. Um, we're going to squeeze the ace king. I'm not going to be too happy if moose and four bets us. Well, we're kind of hoping moose and four to guarantee jams and then we flip over. Some some money that's in the pot. Oh, I'm not necessarily flip. Maybe we get it in really good. Who knows? The lobby's looking very barren at the moment. I think if these tables start to die, we may be struggling for more. We are currently sat at every eight in our table. And there are only, there's only one 10 in our table that we're not currently sat at. Excluding two cap games so no interest in joining if they come available so we might end up this might not be the longest video of all time but um we'll keep playing it until we three tabling once we start three tabling we'll probably end the video not probably end my session unless the three tables are of a particularly high standard if he checks here we are actually going to isolate with the ace deuce because it's like an extra blind in there rather than someone who's limped and then it's probably likely to call a raise against with a hand that's we're not doing great against, you know, we might be doing okay against. It's just like an extra blind when, when someone posts. So I go after the the posts way more than I go after the limps. I don't want to see me into two players here on table four. I thought we were just up against one, but we're not we're up against two, so just Check back, we turn a flush draw where he pots it, so we're just gonna fold. Gonna fold to wherever the heck that is. To her hair. So it looks like a fucking someone used to read the Beano when they were younger. Uh, again, another massively multi-way pot. We have top pair, no kicker. We certainly won't be betting into multiple players. We have a hand where we can maybe think about check calling some bets, trying to get to showdown. Once it checks through, the bet once for value here, then just consider our river options, depending on what the river card is, because it will 
be starting to get somewhat thin if we get cold. That bit isn't thin, but a river bit I think would be thin most of the time. I'm going to have to find a way of starting my sessions earlier because these games seem to go to bed a lot quicker than the 20 and the 30 and games do. We're just to look in the next lobby up. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, there's only six 20 and games. And only 4.30 so no, I guess it doesn't make too much difference I guess to start making my session start earlier in general I think I've pretty much been hanging on all week until 11 o'clock or so to play I think I'm missing out on tons of action by doing that but it's been like a mixture of work coaching sessions and wanting to spend some time with family so I'm not going to be too hard on myself but yeah now we've got some days off coming I think ramping up the hours that I'm playing is it's on the agenda Jacko goes for the 6xi so it's almost impossible for him to have a weekend here which is why I didn't call I said it's almost impossible to we can because it's 6x ISO in against somebody who's only starting the hand with a 20 big blind stack. Which I don't think any reasonable reg would do. Wouldn't 6x ISO against a 20 big blind stack without having a hand that they were, they were like willing to get all the beans in with. He did. He had the ace 10. We're rooting for a spade. No offence to Jack L, but we're certainly rooting for a spade there. See the queens for pure value here. We grim if we get raised, but we definitely have a value bet for sure. Jack X draws, pocket tens, pocket nines, who knows what else. Jack 10 off again. We'll go with the overlimp rather than the ISO. Need to be careful that I don't go too much to the well with the overlimping. We still need to be making some decent isolation raises. Can't just be like overlimping everything, but it's a strategy that's been working really well at the moment. So while it's working, we'll keep with it. If it stops working or start noticing some spots it's not working well in then we can we can have a little fiddle with it as we go along um so we bet and the seven of spades rolls off which is a pretty hideous card on that board he bets eight pence we're just gonna call of course hope to spike a nine that'd be sweet if bet's eight pence again, we're just going to call and expect to lose most of the time, but we're not going to raise. We're going to turn our hand into a bluff here. We've got some showdown value. Hey, River 2 pair, that's, um, that's quite amusing. Whoopsie, three bets, is, which is fun. Call, and we're going to check raise the flop and just not fold. And if he's somehow got jacks or queens, then that's unfortunate we were going to lose a big pot anyway because he wouldn't fall down to a four bet so whatever
pretty much stays in line with my current, not current strategy, but a line that I'm taking sometimes, which is um, sometimes slow playing aces pre. Never like kings or queens because they're just that little bit too vulnerable. It's kind of something I picked up from watching some Doug Polk stuff. Uh, but yeah, sometimes throw some aces into a, into my mix for slow play and pre-flop. But like we said, we're never really doing it with kings or queens or anything like that. reason being that obviously queen gets out flopped quite a bit kings gets out flopped some of the time like with ace x and then with the queens as the ace and the king x and what have you and just aces are just a lot less vulnerable out there and you can you can proceed with a lot more confidence with the post flop i mean yeah we don't want to see the jack queen flop really when someone's three battles um not ideal but it's not the end of the world either because even if we'd like to say if we'd have four but the aces pre if you had jacks or queens um, he wouldn't have folded. We still would have got stacked with the same amount of money. Not over them with the seven six off. Seven six suited definitely would have flicked it in. Not the seven six off. Heavy multi way pot table one. So the adventure is like over before it's begun. There's a carpenter song in there somewhere, isn't there? Yep. A one. Ten and out here with five players on. I'm going to have it open off the screen. So we have a seat locked up there in case one of our tables breaks. Don't really like playing seven tables with one off the screen because I can sometimes lose focus on the table that's not on screen. But the main priority is just like having the seat locked up for when one of the games break. Then we know we're in every single game possible to us. And then I guess the tables will just gradually erode. So that's at this where we kind of really want like Jack L and Wubsy to to not end the sessions because once Jack L and Wubsy start going to bed, the games will all break very quickly because they're that the glue that's kind of holding them together right now at, at several of our tables. So much as I don't particularly like playing with regulars, um, at this time of the night we kind of need some of them to stick around just to keep the just to keep the games running. Completely counterweighted on table two, which isn't fun, but the pot's mind you, so who cares? Who knows? Jack, I might even win if both guys are like limp small pairs. Can't call, of course, but Jack, I might even be the best hand there. Seems unlikely, though. I see you at the river Jack L on table one. Chance we have the best hands. If we don't, we have a reasonable draw. That being just about the best card in the deck for us. Go for the open bet here, try and like rip a missed flush or something. Maybe a hero calls with like pocket eights or something like that.
sorry, we just didn't hand off screen there. Um, and that was focusing on. You guys didn't get to see it, unfortunately, but it's nothing major. We just squeezed pre flop and we got cog in two spots and we took it down with a small C bit, which is really very really nice. Yeah, I'm gonna isolate with the two nines on table one against Daddy. You know, bet and we good shot on table four against Tilly, and we get there as well. Not just betting good shots, we get in there with them. And we didn't pull anything good on that table. We didn't on the one I timed out on. Obviously lose the flip on table. No, we don't obviously lose the flip on. So I just get a bit fast with this seventh table. I kind of wish I hadn't opened the fucking thing now, but never mind. Um, clearly calling on table five with our pair plus open ender. And I've completely lost focus on table two. Um, this seventh table opening was a. Seems like it wasn't the best of ideas. We'll keep it going for now because it looks like table five might be on the verge of breaking. And we just be a little bit less talking in the short term and a little bit more clicking buttons. the nuts off screen oops um, I'll bring it back on if it, anything good happens oh we've been raised or so something good has happened oh we've been raised and called um, I'm not going to slow play here I'm just going to be trying to get all the beans in and we've succeeded And we're up against. Oh, that river sucks. That was a big one. That was a big one. That feels not great to lose that one. And in the meantime, that made me completely lose focus on table two. hurt on off table camera then that's just 20 or quid that's just slid away from us which isn't insignificant I'm gonna check call against Jack here I think on table three don't think he can have too much I think he checks back a lot with decent ace highs doesn't see but doesn't bet pocket eights on the turn. Um right, we're just gonna quit this table and get back to six tabling. Yeah, when we lose those pots, I mean I'm not gonna sulk about it, but because we only actually lost four pounds in the hand, I think, because we had one of the guys covered, but the 28 quid pot out there we get it in with the stone nuts in a 280 big blind pot and get sucked out on um 
It's irritating. Because I've been crushing this challenge so far on Sky. I've made more money than I expected. And I genuinely don't think that I've run particularly well. I certainly like, lost quite a few decent all-ins where I've had either very good equity or like decent equity. Um, so yeah. I mean, we can't complain. I'm running bad and I'm still crushing. So I mean, I'm not whining. But it, it, I mean, it feels like it could have been even better. Yeah. Try and bluff on table three. Works. Maybe we're not bluffing. Maybe we're just like betting with the best hand, or who knows. Uh, limp. A squeeze on table four. Oh, we really hope that's given our friend there a straight. Up on table three. So yeah, the, the plan for the rest of this video is now continue the video running until we just have a strip of three tables across the top. And then the video will end. Maybe the session will, maybe the session won't, but the video will definitely end. If we had close to 400 in the roll I would contemplate like flicking a 20 in L table into the mix but we don't we're not we're not rolled enough yet what we got here 212 2 23 240 250 268 278 yeah 288 it's not enough <laughs> We need to be at least 400 before I could flick a 20 in just to like keep the real estate up. And even then, I wouldn't want to do it at 400, I'd much rather stick to the plan at 500. Not a great flop for our 28s against G Wilson 16. It's a great turn for our two eights against G Wilson sixteen. I do believe that's a set on <clears throat> on table six. It's a full house on Bottom table, far from the not full house, but clearly we're happy to pick and shit with our hand. And somehow I've managed to completely butcher a full house on table one. And we're now we're praying AJ bets. Because I didn't even know that the hand was going on. Too much going on at the tables. So again, the six table in curse comes to bite me. Let's just hope nobody had a hand that we've missed a ton of value from. Nope. In fact, nobody even had a pair, so we didn't miss a we didn't miss a red cent in value. But still, that's inexcusable to to completely just autopilot through a hand.
not the best of flop when your 6x ISO gets called in three spots on table two. I'm going to continue with the ace on table three, table five, sorry. It's very exploitable fold, but one that I'm pretty comfortable making given that we can't really look to call down too often there's someone like donks for pot it's not that we're in a situation where we can call multiple streets so if we're not planning on calling down I'm not going to call just in the hope that our opponent slows down and that run out should have been pretty horrible for our pocket nines cannot imagine any way in which you win the pot if somebody bets And once it goes back call, really can't think of a way. Starting to see some holes appearing in table five, which is unfortunate. Really need to see some people join table four quite quickly because probably won't be too long before his boys has bust his 26 blinds and then it's kind of probably going to be game over for that table Sadly, it looks like table three might be on its way out too, with two guys having no chips. We well, want to call the 5x with the 10 8 suit in that position. raise my line for incredibly thin value here <laughs> wow we're getting min three bet now we're getting like seven six to one on a call probably can't fold even though we beat nearly always just because of like the way the hand's gone down we give it up his bet size give us it's too good a price on the river to fold unfortunately probably shouldn't have raised but when somebody just bets eight pence kind of think no there's maybe slightly more value to be had looking for a red one on table two table one It's just small enough where I think we have to call. It's tempting to, if I thought Daddy was a better player, I'd be tempted to try and bluff this river and try and rep the straight, but I don't think he can afford an ace. Certainly don't think he can afford a hand like two pair. So I'm just going to, makes me want to bluff. He might have induced a bluff here for me. He might be about to get paid off. I'm just going to hope he doesn't bet the river with a 4. No, he bets it with the a7 and doesn't fold it anyway, so... Yep, I guess he earned that with his small bet. Not a huge fan of 
bluffing in those spots. But I do go for it an awful lot. I just can't help myself. I cannot help myself. And that two river check raises is we've made now and neither of them worked out too well for us. Both times we had somebody just betting like an incredibly small amount with, with like a wee case. I wonder how much we have to bet to get Danny to fall with that like, ace crap kicker there on. When he's beat by anything, he's beat by like every single value combo that I have. Um, he literally only beats my bluffs, and I'm not going to have very many there. I mean, he's obviously he's not thinking that way, but who knows? To has from memory from last night, he's a bit of a fighter, so. Not that into like just Betty versus Miss C bets. Once he checks again, though, we'll just try and get some value on this river. Yeah, like I said, he's a fighter. He doesn't give up too easily, and he certainly wasn't checked for on that flop. It's really nice when you play a hand exactly like that. You know, call when you got the best of it pre-check when you're behind on the flop, then just bet when you're. You're good on the river. Um, doesn't always work out that way, but it's nice when it does. Man, so you miss Skelter Man. Why can't you say evening to me? Table four there. Just picking and choosing who the fuck he wants to say hello to. Seems a bit harsh. Probably gonna lose nearly all the time, but we have to call it, and that's why. Check raise on Ellis until he doesn't accommodate me with a bit. I'm gonna assume that Ace has hit him in some ways. Um, I'm gonna look at stacks. I guess we just have to jam and hope he hasn't given him. A better two pair or something, which it didn't. See, like just min three bet the ace nine off suit there, which probably isn't a good idea. Oh, we have two aces on table three. Just draw your attention to that now in case. In case it all starts kicking off. Stick with my strategy of 6 x it out of the big blind when there's limpers. I'd be willing to play for all of Mitt's chips here. Not so much for all of Guaranteed's. Given that we're like significantly deeper with guarantee or whatever the heck he's called himself. Five seems like a pretty reasonable card. He goes all in. We're going to call. He's going to have a straight draw. And he's not going to get that. I 
are we going to get past the £300 barrier tonight? be pretty sweet considering we started just nine days ago with 105 that would be sweet we need like 200 pounds nearly in eight days at eight and ten and l uh, i don't care that it's just eight and ten and l it's still pretty cool especially when i haven't exactly been smashing the hours in the call you for 10 pence do we yeah just a backdoor flush draw alone is probably going to make it okay and my backdoor trips backdoor two pair all those types of things not ideal cost but when it's 10 pence it's not like we're ever going to fold situation down on table three I think I'm gonna fold he's a fighter but he's a caller more than a fucking check race turn jam river sort of fighter we have to call the turn because of the nut flush draw um, but once we break I don't think we have a profitable call And we can't just let egos go into it. If we think it's a fold, we think it's a fold. Yeah, th there might be a small dynamic building up, but I'm not just going to spew off like 60 blinds with just one pair. And like a dick wave in exercise. If he's bluffed us there, fair play to seriously doubt he has, but if he has bluffed us, then well done to him. set on table three well I think it can be a value bet pretty hard to flop trips hard to see how Jack Hell has a queen in his hand given he just over limped and called it's not sure what queens he can have here it's out of the pocket five so I'm not sure he has the best hand because we've seen him like making six X's with like decent broadways and things. He knows I if he's any good, he knows I don't have too many queens. Not sure he can have too many queens. Bit disappointed the ace has come. Not for the ace, but for the fact that he might have a flush draw. It's got there, but I'm probably going to bluff catch this river. Wow, he just checks back a flush. Wow, play worse, Jackel. Play worse, sir. 
I mean, no offense if you're watching these videos, I genuinely no offense. Well, I guess I do mean a little bit of offense, but how do you not value bet that river? And that's what makes Jack L a bad regular because he just he just fails to get value there when my hand is clearly like some kind of bluff catcher at best. I mean, he would have absolutely got paid off by me there. Even though I identified like, the Ace of Hearts as being like a pretty bad card. Um, yeah. That's not good. Didn't like... Well, didn't mind his overlimp. Didn't mind his flop raise. I think he needs to see it through on the turn there. A lot of the time. I think his river check back is it's inexcusable, I think. Fine, yeah, the board's paired, and yeah, he's got like the fifth nut flush or whatever the hell it is. But um, yeah, it's an atrocious check back. But this is what makes Sky so good because you just. Players just aren't that good at value betting, so you get to see an awful. You get to realise all your equity a lot of the time. You get let off the hook. A decent amount of the time by regulars who fail to, to bet hands that are cleared in the best hand. Um, so, yeah, that's why we like Sky. That's why we've switched the challenge to here. There he goes now with his 6x ISO. So we can be reasonably confident that this time he does have a big hand. He's doing exactly what I'm doing. I'm not knocking his strategy. But if he's not going to adjust for me, then he's going to find it really hard to win a big pot from me. And he's going to... Um, you know, it's just... He has to be capable of like using his strategy, which is a good strategy for these games... But then, um, be capable of adjusting it for for certain opponents. You have to be adjusting in these games to the things that you see. Squeeze against Wubsy here on table six. Hope not to get four wet because we'd have to be sad and fold. Against I sad, you know, though we're just gonna go bet, 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 and if he raises, we're just gonna again be a little bit sad and click the call button. So we have seven ten left. We bet like two eighty here. Shove the river, it's all good. Hope not to see a spade. Anything straighty. At least the table's out breaking. They've kind of two of them went onto life support and then somehow managed to resurrect themselves, which is almost biblical. For the record, I have no religious beliefs. Don't knock anyone that does have them, but I don't have them, so any biblical references you hear from me will be firmly tongue in cheek, but I don't wish to cause offence to. Anyone who does have religion in their lives? <laughs> P 
paying off with the king queen for three big so i'm table six there just because i don't think he's going to be like bluffing with ace high very often um and he's pretty much just checked until then so we were getting what we were getting three to one on a call not think it's the greatest call i've ever made but he's going to turn up with enough like 10 9 and shit like that there that he's just stabbing with often enough to make it fine i think probably going to ditch table five in a moment two regulars albeit one particularly limited regular and a fish with 25 bigs is not worth playing three-handed for It's that time night where the sky tile feature just decides not to fucking work. It's only in the browser that it does this, but considering I play through the browser all the time, it's it's a little bit irritating. I much prefer playing through the browser because the software just works. Well, <laughs> maybe I'm saying something stupid. It just works better in terms of it's more responsive. When I play through the client, it's it's a massive resource hog sometimes I have to click buttons multiple times to make them fucking work yeah. and because unlike many sky regulars I'm not cheating and I'm not using tracking software I don't need to have the client open you know the regs that are using hold them indicator and whatever to, to try and gain edge they need to play through the client but I don't use that stuff so more than happy playing through the browser it seems to be much more stable, apart from this irritating tile button stopping working from time to time. By the way, if you are one of the Skyrex that's playing using Hold'em Indicator, um, I'm not judging you, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think it's bad of Sky that it happens and they must 100% be aware that people are using it and they do fuck all about it whilst preaching that they are constantly like fucking fighting against it. It's been software that's been able to be used on Sky in literally fucking forever. Um, they're clearly incapable of, of stopping it working. So I don't know why they don't just say, you know what, we're going to allow Hold'em Indicator because we can't fucking defend against it. But they don't. They just decide to you know, lie and do fuck all about it whilst pretending that they, they care about game integrity and what have you. But whatever. I clearly don't feel too disadvantaged by it because if I did, I'd just buy Hold'em Indicator and I'd just play through the client. So there you go. It just, it's just a bugbear of mine that I've asked on Sky about like tracking stuff a number of times, given the opportunity to say, you know what, Let's just say, fuck it, we can't defend against it, so we'll put it in a, like, a loud software list, but they won't do that. They just continue to lie, basically, about how they deal with it or what have you. Clean 10 off. Nope. It's a bit of a trouble hand, isn't it, when we're out of position? Dear, no offence to, well... I don't know why I said no offence there, because I guess I do mean offence to any Sky people that ever stumble on this video, but yeah. Stop bullshitting your punters, basically. When people ask specific questions about Hold'em Indicator, don't bullshit and say it's banned software and we do everything in our powers to, to stop people using it, because to be frank, you do absolutely fucking nothing to stop people using it. I don't even know if you try. You might try. You, you either try and you're fucking rubbish at stopping people using it, or you just don't try and then you lie about trying. But either way, it's piss poor.
how can we quit these games at the minute? They are pretty good. Hopefully they'll keep running. You squeeze against Wubsy when he doesn't make it particularly big. Iso race. It looks like a cheap iso race to me. The 32 there when there's been two limpers. I guess we'll see. Could be wrong. Been wrong before. Calls. Well, two people caught the effect. When I see bet here, if Wubsy doesn't go away, I will be concerned that he has a real hand. Mind you, once Ellie sort of falls, I guess he can think about fucking with me a little bit. King on the river table. Six. I guess we just bet fold. I hope to see a lot of green on table two. We do not see a lot of green. We see the A and we see one club, which is probably going to keep us around for one street, assuming there's no crazy action. Well, Jack Ellery bomb C bets. He has us out kicked here, like pretty much for sure. And we don't suck out any often enough, so we're just going to fold. There's not a fucking chance that Jack L is C betting a worse hand than our hand there multi way. It's just he just isn't that guy. We've seen he isn't that guy. Um, so if we know something or we think we know something about a player and then we like make some bad calls against them just in case it's it's bad. We've got to go with our reads. And who knows, maybe Jack L watches his videos and maybe he starts adjusting to me and then I have to adjust to him. But right now, we're going to assume Jack L doesn't even know I exist. We're going to assume he doesn't know the channel exists. We're going to assume he doesn't watch them. We're going to assume that he doesn't know what my read is on him. And then we're going to just give him massive credit there. And even if he does like have know that I have a certain read against him, he still can't just like bluff multi-way there. Because he's got so many other people to consider. Isolation raise gone wrong on table once. We're going to hope to see some red ones or some kings. Didn't see either. So we're just pretty much done with it. We're going to quit table four. Hope to spike a five on table. Well, not whatever that table is. Table six, five. Not sure what you call it at this point in proceedings. Might bet this river if Jack doesn't bet it. If he calls, he calls. You know, we we know we can't win by checking. And it's looking pretty much like we're going to be end of video soon, guys. Down to four tables. We have every chance that what is going to table four is going to break any second now. These big hands we're getting in a row again. Absolutely no action with them. Oh, just to say that Ellis decides to pop in. 
him in three. But we need to bear in mind, last time we did this, he didn't have much of a hand, but we're certainly going to fall back still. And we are reasonably deep, so we'll ignore the fact he just mid four betters and still make it a good size. Sadly, the ace hits, and we're now in cheap showdown mode. Interesting river. And what did he do with that time? Pocket eight. has 100% died. Um, this could be the end of the session now because I'm not playing three-handed against Barman and Jackal. Not because I feel I don't have much of an edge, just because, well, yeah, don't think there's an awful lot of juice at the table, so... As Frank Sinatra once sang, well, just listen to the start of my way. I'm not going to sing to you now because my singing is dreadful. But if you don't know what Frank Sinatra just sang, just put my way into YouTube and listen to the first couple of lines and you'll know. Oh, at least I was reloaded for 24, 30 blinds. Probably not worth sticking around for. I think I might just call it a night and it is now 20 past 1 in the morning. It's probably not the worst time to go to bed. Even though I will be making a tuna sandwich first. Good shot. 7? Nope. River de Pair might just get us there. Who knows? It did. So yeah, um... We're going to end the video here because we've, we've had like a good hour and ten. Again, it's not the best in terms of volume for the challenge, but it is what it is at the moment. I'm in no rush. I'd like to get it done in a reasonable time frame, but I'm not in like some mega rush with it. So we just sit out blind all our tables. Then we'll pull our spreadsheet up and we'll see where we're at for this session. And he started with 279 tonight, I believe. I'm going to go up with the ISO with the Queen 10 because it just doesn't play that well for an overlimp. We have some like, reasonable high card value if we get somebody heads up.
Sorry for the extended silence, but there really isn't an awful lot to talk about when. Two tabling and being dealt crumbs. So there we go, that's going to be the end of these two tables. Our bankroll currently stands at 271, 283, 293. We started 279, so that's a 14 pounds profit for tonight. We'll feed that in. No idea what any of that means. We started the session on the first, so oh one, twelve, sixteen, five, five, ten, no limit, sixty, seventy-four. I started at so ten, twelve o'clock was it? Yeah. So I play one hour twenty minutes, which is that what one point three three hours. Over six tables, making our, that can't be right, I must have missed something here because I started at 105, that's 180, but now my bankroll's on like 293, so we're 13 pounds out somewhere. There'll been some rate back. I've clearly made an error somewhere because we've, we've got £13 more currently than this is saying we should have. So I guess I need to add £13 to something. Add it to that one just for the sake of it. And um, we'll turn that to 77 because that makes it right now because it's 188 profit and we've got 188 profit. So I guess we're just going to have to put our rate back in there and what have you. Um, so yeah, 15.8 hours, cut 16 hours, currently running at £11.88 an hour at 5 and 10 an hour. Again, probably, most likely, unsustainable, but we're going to keep riding this train. I'm going to keep riding this train until, until it stops. Um, what's that, eight winning sessions in a row? Pretty sweet. Um, yeah, it's all going well. Thanks for watching and I'll be back probably tomorrow with another video. Um, bye for now.